Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for SiliconANGLE's The Cube's exclusive coverage of IBM Pulse, IBM's premier cloud conference. This is The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Heidi Dedhoff, Vice President of Global Mid-Market Marketing for IBM, which is a huge uh, market segment that will benefit from this awesome cloud, low cost, high performing, um, dynamic environment. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. We, we uh, theCUBE loves to talk about where the innovation is. Obviously cloud has been one of those things where it's been going through all kinds of cycles, now it's real. But your mid-market group benefits huge here. Oh, huge. absolutely. So absolutely. talk a little bit about how big that is in your mind, how huge the impact is to the mid-market and to the partners and the channel and the just overall gross margin, growth, sure. dollars, I mean, throw out figures if you want. <laughs> well, first of all, the mid-market is the fastest growing segment within IBM. And so for us to reach that small, medium business buyer out there is just huge. And then with the, the purchase of software and the announcements that we heard here this week, just allows us to expand that growth rate even further. So we are super, super excited what we heard this week um, at Pulse with um, that expanded ecosystem reaching to the development community, opening up our software capabilities, and basically essentially turning IBM as a service. So that's that's great for us. And so from mid-market perspective, uh, we see that it actually just only accelerating our growth. We've been giving you guys a lot of high marks on the, on the messaging and how you guys are positioning the cloud, up and down positioning from high-end enterprise to the small, medium-sized businesses, because it just hangs together. And you, know, you can get IBM as a service, and you can do on-premise. But for, this, for the, for the mid-market, the small, medium-sized businesses, really people point to Microsoft's Windows and, 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 and you guys sold your desktop PC mm -hmm. business years ago and now low-end server business. That whole market of like this overhead involved and, and, and having an email exchange server and IT for right. a small business is a huge challenge. And it's been kind of like a bunch of rocks on people's back in terms of like, you know, innovation. So now yeah. cloud, Eliminates that. You can go to a SaaS model. Everyone yep. who goes SaaS gets some leverage. Um, so talk about that dynamic, but talk about it in context to with a dollar shift. Sure. For instance, bars, ISVs, channel mm -hmm. partners, because those guys now can really add value. Oh, absolutely. So talk about that dynamic of how you change the game on the economics, and then how that. Uh, lifts the channel. Okay, so first of all, I really think the shift that's occurring right now, it's def definitely what you touched upon, it's moving the back office to the front office. I think we as consumers are experiencing that today. So technology and innovation is becoming so ubiquitous. It's like reaching for the phone and expecting to hear dial tone. That's the kind of thing that I think the cloud is delivering, especially to these small, medium business buyers. They don't want to have this infrastructure to worry about. They want to worry about growth and profitability and scalability. They want to grow a business. And so these small, medium business buyers actually are starting to look very different to us. Um, they're become basically managed service providers. Some would argue that, well, that's really a channel. But from a mid-market perspective, that's the new client. So MSPs and cloud service providers are actually the new mid-market buyer for us. And that's where a lot of the growth opportunity is for us too. So they are, and they are a channel, right? They're a combination. Right? They're, Absolutely, they're, they're a channel for IBM because they're buying from us, but at the same time, and we want to make sure we give them that end-to-end -end care and feeding and support, make sure they're enabled on our platforms, but then also, you know, they're they're basically running many, many small businesses they're, out there. They're the new distributor, if you want to use Turning the metaphor. IT they're not profit, distribu right? distributing uh, yeah. benefits, value. Absolutely. So they're Absolutely. brokering the value, so they actually use the product, they buy and use the product, then they tack on additional gross margin services, 100% probably, right. to their customers. Absolutely, and they're coming up in, you know, many flavors. I mean, look at Monetize as an example. Monetize is basically all about mobile money. I mean, so they're serving up their application to 350 or so financial institutions. 
So that's an interesting, they're a client, but they're also a channel partner. Dave too. and I always talk about the whole channel thing, it comes up all the time in our services angle conversations around, you know, even look at CSC bought, um, you know, service mesh. I mean, they're basically fully integrating in, providing those capabilities mm -hmm. in high-end virtualization situations. So you're seeing the channel yep. partners saying, hey, I make more money 100% gross profit with services that I provide right. that gets enabled by my vendor. Absolutely. The vendor, I'm not buying gear anymore and tacking on some margin and then some other maintenance and some right. services. It's, I get a platform and I'm now the, the provider. Right, I'm the provider. So, but we're interesting, also seeing, interesting. Oh, it's it, extremely, absolutely. But we're also seeing this major transformation take place in the channel itself. I'm sure others have talked about this, but our traditional resellers, if you will, are now trying to embrace the cloud, and as a result of that, they're recognizing within their respective businesses, they may have to run two sales forces, as an example. You know, it's the traditional product type of resell, but now you're talking about yeah. cloud, adding new services on top of the cloud. That's a big shift for so many of our business partners. So on the mid-market side, we're making sure that we're offering them some of the, the workshops they need. An example I'd give you is in mid-market, we actually have uh, launched social media boot camps because we're realizing that it takes social selling skills today to reach these new buyers. And so we basically have over 3,000 of our business partners who have now graduated yeah. from the boot camps. We want to follow up. On, we want to follow up. So first of all, I get all excited when this comes up when I hear stuff like this because it's not only innovative, it really is disruptive. And so when you have this new, new disruptive landscape, new opportunities present themselves. So you mentioned the boot camp. So I got to ask you the question: uh -huh. um, As a marketer, the marketing mix is changing. Yeah. So talk about your marketing mix. How are you going to market? Because now the old day was, hey, here's a product. Right. Here's some co-op dollars, and then you know have a golf tournament. Everyone's happy, and then you know here's some extra dough. You know whatever. So we have Rebates. two flavors of marketing and mid-market. So one is definitely marketing with and to our business partners. So we have a very lucrative co-marketing program. It's a 75-25. We actually match up to 75% of the dollar that they put into their, um, into their marketing campaigns. We actually help package ready to execute campaigns, making it easy for them to get into market. So that's one side of our marketing. The other side is IBM-led marketing, and it is very much focused on social and digital marketing. We subscribe to a paid, own, earn digital marketing approach that allows us to have paid media investments, but at the same time, what we find to be more attractive to us is that ownership, if you will, in the marketplace, perhaps around cloud, mobile, social, writing white papers, making sure we've got relevant and timely content at the right place at the right time. But the nice part is this idea of earned, letting other influencers like yourself the talk cube. about us. The, a, cube the, the Cube is a great is example media right here. of earned media right Crowd here. Crowdchat is earned media, tweet chats. Um, but that's the new balance of the force of this whole connected social business model, Absolutely. right? I mean, you have now a new constituency, the, the audience, who are not only just receiving one directional messaging, it's total dialogue, yep. it's a handshake, it's collaborative, but there's also fast travel of information. Right. <laughs> you, know, you gotta can't keep oh, your cards yeah. close to your vest anymore. Absolutely. Total transparency. And I love the communities that have emerged too. So we actually participate with Spiceworks, which reach, reaches out to mm. that IT level professional. Again, they might represent their own shop, or they may be an IT professional in a large organization, but we really felt it was important to, to touch that audience. The Blue Mix announcement that we just had is a huge thing for us to get out to our Spiceworks community as an example. So how, what's the partnership with Spiceworks? Talk about that. Um, so Spiceworks, we actually have Midsize Insider, which is a property that we have within Spiceworks. So it allows IBM to have some branded content out there, but at the same time have that interaction, to your point, this collaboration, this idea of building and fostering this community with IT like-minded professionals that are focused on the small, medium business side of the, the marketplace. Are you, do you want to work with like LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups at all? We have LinkedIn properties, we have um, Facebook properties. Um, one of the things that I'm excited about too, just because we go to market with our business partners, we want to promote their success. So we have what we call the IBM engine of the week. We believe that they are our engine. And so we actually make sure that we um, help promote their client success 
and we promote it through both Facebook and LinkedIn properties. So talk about the co-op program again. I want to back up because okay. the IBM led. You're essentially providing patterns. To use the pure, <laughs> okay. the pure analogy. Yeah. You're basically I'm taking liberty. You're essentially some improvement on those patterns. Yeah. The pattern, yeah. pattern, I hate the name patterns, but I, I want to say that in front of those guys. But uh, I shouldn't have said that live. But I love patterns. These be renamed. He didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't mean it. these be renamed. Um, the template or the recipes, whatever Great. you want to call it. Yep. Um, you guys are using your IBM lead. That makes total sense. Sure. Got a lot of leverage there. Great Just brand, of course. Great right. brand, boiler played out, execute whatever channel they want to put in. Uh, but the co-op is interesting. Talk about the co-op. How do you guys manage the co-op when you have so many different channels to deal with? Now with social media, omni-channel right. omni marketing is a huge challenge. So we have a, a couple things. One is, you know, in our, what we, I called ready to execute campaigns, we have some of those, you know, social and digital marketing templates that allow a business partner to, to leverage that kind of new marketing, if you will. That boot camp, I kept going back to the boot camp, but the first order of business that we had to do is make sure our business partners could embrace and use social media. So we got really basic with them. They loved it. And then now I think even at Pulse, we've got some more advanced social media boot camp sessions going on here so that they can beef up their social selling skills within their respective sales forces. So so they're obviously receptive to it. Uh, yeah. Were they, have they always been? Or did you have to kind of oh, no. drag I mean, them in? I mean, there, you know, at first, you know, I know that some of our large business partners, some of their, their executives may not even have a LinkedIn profile yet, but we want to help them establish uh, relevancy, credibility, get their brand out there in those properties and realize, oh my gosh, I'm actually potentially getting leads from this. And you know, it gets we do so much business great. with our, on, online with our community. We have 58 million people, and and having the ability to just randomly socially handshake someone right. or give them a fist pump or favor their tweet sure. gets their attention, and you can have a dialogue quickly. I, I know one of the struggles that we all have still is how the measurability of you know social media. So we get that. We have a social media expert on our sales organization who works uh, runs our European practice. And he is a he's great following on, on Twitter and LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it. He gets deals. He gets actual sales opportunities from these platforms. Sure. So it's trying to, to communicate those successes. Yeah, if that, you and will. that's and that's early on. Yeah. So you know, we, we see the social like the web in ninety five. Everyone sees it, they can or ninety six, it's yep. starting to come in, it's going into the business practice, but the tooling's evolving. Right. Um, and the innovators like yourself and what we're doing here with the cube and crowd chats, other things, we're out on the front end. It's the ROI is still elusive. How right. are you managing that internally where you've got naysayers or people up, up above you saying, sure. show me the numbers, um, is it more followers, is it basic? Are you like, how basic are the reporting? You know, when we started with some of our bigger properties, we were all about impressions, 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 you know, like big numbers, get the impressions up. I, I, you we know, hear that all the time. Billions of impressions. <laughs> so, you know, I'm really focusing my team and our agency partners to focus, it's no longer about impressions, it's about the engagement and then the conversion. And that's the num those are the numbers we look at every week, just to see, you know, do I need to adjust my paid media in order to keep my impressions going, but more importantly, again, that, you know, that conversion rate going. How do you measure conversion when it's social, people don't want to be sold to? It's, well, it's, it's, it's track, that's the challenge. So, you know, what we're using is industry benchmarks to see how are we tracking on some of these, you know, investments that we're making yeah. in the paid, owned, earned side. Where we're seeing the greatest traction, though, is with our influencer community. Right, and one of the influencer. things we found is a lot of the traditional systems, whether it's the CRM system or, you know, the marketing platform, right. they, they, they can accommodate social, but the business process doesn't accommodate social. Right. And so, there's still a lot of learnings going on. Talk about on the here. influencer thing. How do, how do you guys get ROI on the influencers? We love the influencer programs. It's coming in through like our, we, you know, our paid or both organic and paid blogging community. People are sorry, writing I about. The day. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry. Get a chance. No, it's okay. It's okay. Go, no, 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 no. <laughs> so. <laughs> Long day. Please continue. Oh no, I was just saying that really we we great get great value on traditional public relations, analyst relations, obviously being from IBM, but again, this influencer community that we've invested in, like Spiceworks, um, like some of our paid bloggers, but then more importantly, people talking about us and just you know retweeting and and seeing articles. Um, you know, it's content. It's content is so you know. Being you present is the number is one thing in, in socials. Being there, not just fake. Right. Just being actively present. Right. Sorry, Dave. Go I, ahead. I, well, God. I think that the, the, the thing no I want to say. No fighting, guys. Is, I, I, mean, I mean, well, first of all, I mean, you look at 
uh, the way that the buying decisions are made today, by the time you call the salesperson, you've, you've done a lot of research, right. you've maybe already made up your mind. So a, a big part of social is trying to be involved in the conversation, participate right. you know, as a peer, potentially, and add value to the conversation. And then I think the other thing is, it reminds me of the story when you know when TV came out, all the radio executives say, why would, it, why would a bunch of people want to watch a bunch of guys talking you know, on radio? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so they didn't really fully understand the power of the medium. And I think that's what we're seeing with, with social. social. You know, you, you can't get much more out of your email marketing. Right? We've right. squeezed all oh, yeah. the blood we can from, from that stone. And right now, there's a lot of trial and error going on, a lot of experimentation. But you know, in, I, I feel as though, in a lot of cases, it's working. Mm -hmm. and and the the metrics you know will evolve I don't I know think how so. you feel about that. oh I completely agree I would think we have a lot of learning to do right now with social um, and I think that we'll see you know different new bars being set or industry benchmarks being set that we can measure our ourselves against software I watch software I mean they are you know I think setting a brand new bar for us inside IBM of how we should go to market more digitally so now um, just to redefine sort of mid-market, uh, we, we, I think, heard earlier, you guys defined it sub-1,000, is that right? Is that Less than 1,000 employee size, absolutely. Okay. And then do you break down small and So medium, we do or? support small. We've got a number of different programs that help us uh, reach that small business owner. Um, whether it's a you know minority-owned business or if it's the mom and pop down the street, so we've got an SME toolkit, if you will, that we do with some financial partners that helps small businesses, you know, just get started with templates, with planning kits, help them link up to financial institutions. So we also have programmatic support behind very small businesses. And, as well. and your responsibility, Heidi, is global. Right? It's worldwide. That, well, absolutely. Are, are, what, what are the regional differences that you're discerning? Are, are they there and, and maybe you could describe them? Oh, absolutely. What I'm seeing in differences just from a marketing perspective is this adoption of social and digital. Not every country is embracing a paid owner model that I just set out before. So I've, I know I've got work to do on my team to make sure I help educate and bring the right skills, both internally but also externally. And then I think the other differences that we're seeing is that the transformation rate within our partner community is also very unique and different depending on the countries as well. And, and is the tooling unique as well? I mean, or is it Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter? Different properties in different countries. Yeah. You know, not everybody's embraced the Facebook, you know, well, the Wade, early data is coming you know. in. You're seeing the use cases. What our findings, we're big in social. We have our social media lab that we run, and we have our own R&D, and, and we look at the data. And the influencers, interesting, we see the same dynamic. Influencers move the market, and they're very, if you work them properly, like you guys do, and you're present, it works. I've seen some companies have an influencer program. It's basically the top blogger. Yeah. And it's, that's not the right influencer. Because you can now talk to customers, and this comes back down to your mm -hmm. point, and I want to get your perspective on this as we end the segment. Small bus businesses are nimble. They're not fighting the back office, it's all front office. Word of mouth is critical because they ask other small businesses what they're using. Right. And so on Twitter, that's like oh, rapid, amazing. frictionless communication. Could you imagine? <laughs> I mean, it's like this rapid referral program. You know, I mean, it's like, oh, well, so-and-so said, right? It must be good. So. I'm a big believer in endorsement marketing really comes into the word of mouth. When you start seeing, right. you know, you're judged by the company that you keep. And if you're winning, people right. will see that and Absolutely. people want to be associated with winners, not losers. So, you know, if you have a bad solution, word's going to get out pretty yep. quick. I agree. Um, well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Mid-Market's got a great opportunity. Um, Heidi, great, uh, great knowledge. We love your strategy. You get the CUBE endorsement. Dave and I both uh, think you're amazing just in the vision. You're way, way ahead of a lot of the other companies in terms of social, seeing the digital. And again, you're onto this channel and looking at it differently. Um, but yet keeping your eye on the prize is, is a nice job. Congratulations. Thank we'll be right you. back to theCUBE after this short break. Thank you.